at it again and we found out some very interesting information here it seems like every single day there's another little tidbit of information that comes out um that is quite interesting to say the least like share comment and hit that subscribe button if you are new if you would like to help me out even further with this youtube algorithm too watch this video to the very end helps out tremendously all right and of course share all these videos it's the arrow button down below you can copy the link and paste it anywhere you like you can paste it on your page or text it to somebody or dm it to somebody post it on your facebook your instagram your twitter uh whatever well i guess it's called x now not twitter that's kind of it's gonna get it's gonna be a long time until i'm used to saying x instead of twitter but anyway let's dive in can't go on. A sitting president, meanwhile, taking the stand against his own Justice Department. That was the potential scenario revealed in a newly uncovered letter by Politico detailing these negotiations behind Hunter Biden's now dead plea deal. Andy McCarthy, former assistant U.S. attorney and Fox News contributor. Andy, good morning to morning. you. Uh, Betsy Swan morning. had the scoop over the weekend in Politico. If you printed out that article, you're 15 pages deep. And you can't just crank out a story like that overnight. This had to take some time. Uh, what do you read into it? What was going on? What was the result? Well, I hope what they take from it on Capitol Hill, Bill, is the way that this kind of intertwines with the scheme that they're looking at. You know, it's all very interesting about what happened with Hunter Biden, why they didn't prosecute him, what they'll do now that the deal collapsed. That stuff is all interesting. But, you know, in the big scheme, the Biden family influence peddling business, people are, are hand-wringing about where's the quid pro quo? Was he in business? Did they discuss business? And in the meantime, in the Hunter Biden case, here you have exhibit A of how the scheme worked. You have these big, bad Justice Department prosecutors who aren't supposed to be afraid of anything. They got this guy dead to rights on a 10-year gun felony and tax evasion charges. And they're afraid to charge him. They won't charge him. The case is disappearing. The statute of limitations is running. But they're scared to death to charge him because they don't want to charge Joe Biden's son. They're afraid to do it. They're being told it would be career suicide to pull the trigger on a case like that. This is... Allegedly, of course. So allegedly they were being told and are being told that it would be career suicide if they upheld the rule of the law hmm so it it seems like rules for thee but no rules for me kind of applies here doesn't it but joe would like to um say that nobody's above the law joe and all his cronies you know all the elites all of those folks nobody's above the law well what about hunter hmm because allegedly he could have 10 years i haven't seen him spin even one you go from 10 to nothing? How does that happen? That, that, that's a long time to just disappear. You know, I'm just saying. To just wipe off the slate. Like, you got you got 10 years on the books. And all of a sudden, it's just gone. And allegedly, you were telling them it would be career suicide. Their careers would be over. And of course, they're afraid. I'm sure they got families to feed. Okay. I'm sure that the, 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 these folks aren't like young, spry, 20-year-olds who have the whole rest of their lives to figure it out. You know what I mean? At the same time, they still should do the right thing. I'm not saying that they shouldn't. But, at the same, but also, I somewhat understand where they're coming from, their thought process. Like I always say, I, put, I like to put myself in other people's shoes and try to see things from their perspective so that I can garner a better understanding of what's happening and what's actually going on. And in that instance, I get it. I get it. I think a lot of us would like, <clears throat> you know, if you're up there in age and somebody's threaten, threatening your income, your, your, your livelihood, you, you got a house, you know, a wife, kids. They got to eat, they need a roof over their head, they need health insurance, you know, and the list goes on, right? And now somebody's threatening that, you might pause too, rightfully so, rightfully so. But still, at the end of the day, we all have to do the right thing, and the right thing is to give this man t the 10 years that he, that he 
<laughs> allegedly earned. <laughs> you know, I was going to say deserved, but he earned it. You earned them 10 years, buddy. Go ahead and sit down. Go ahead and sit down for a while behind them bars. Sheesh. It's exactly what access to Joe Biden is. Mm. This is why people were willing to pay millions of dollars to get it. That's what the scheme was. And our most mm. recent poll for Fox News is couple number two. When it comes to his foreign business dealings, Hunter Biden did something illegal. Well, in February, that number was 37 percent. In April, it was 44 percent. Today, it is 50 percent. And I have to imagine that the collapse of the plea deal was maybe something. But what about this idea that Hunter Biden's lawyers floated the maybe the threat or the idea that they would call the president of the United States to the stand? What, what, how do you think that went over with the president's lawyers? Well, I think we know how it went over, Dana, because he was never charged. I mean, I, I know I'm like a broken record on this now, but every week we talk about this, and every week I say, another week has gone by and there's no indictment. And the charges are disappearing. The, the, you know, 2016's gone, 2015's gone, 2014's gone. Really, most crimes be, prior to 2018 are gone because they never indicted. All the tax charges prior to 2017 are gone. And this scheme only runs till about 2019 because they had to rein their sales in once Biden's 2020 presidential campaign uh, got into full swing. So the case is disappearing day by day. But what we see in the, in the stories that were reported over the weekend is they're intimidated by Joe Biden. They're afraid to, to charge a case they would charge in any other instance because of what the blowback is going to be against them career-wise, professional-wise, et cetera. Uh, they're... Um I believe I saw something about there's a rapper by the name of Kodak Black, and he's actually one of the individuals that Trump pardoned. Uh, Kodak Black is. And allegedly, the story is Kodak Black actually had one of the same charges that Hunter Biden had, and he was sentenced to, I don't, I don't remember ex the exact number. I want to say it, for some reason, like five years keeps popping up in my head, but I could be wrong about the exact number. But he was actually sentenced and sent to prison, to prison for allegedly the exact same thing or one of one of the exact same things. It was one of them. One one of the charges was the same. If I remember it, it correctly, I don't quote me, but I, I could be wrong. But as far as I remember, it was one of the charges and he was sentenced to like five years. It might have been less three, three, three or five years. And he's in prison. And uh, I believe his lawyer came out and was complaining about it. Hold on. How in the world does Hunter get away with the same thing that my client went to prison for? And Hunter did this these other things as well. And he hasn't spent a day in prison. My client went to prison. The only reason why he's out is because he got pardoned by Uncle Trump. This, this makes no sense. This is a double standard here. <laughs> but of course... Once again, rules for thee, no rules for me. That's, that's how Joe Biden and his cronies roll. Uh, if they mess with Joe Biden's son. And again, this is what these foreign actors were paying for. Yeah. <clears throat> Shaking my head, Andy, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm SMH over here today. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Uh, I know. By the way, do you think David Weiss testifies in October or September? Is that just not even going to happen at all now? Yeah, I think he'll say now that he's a special counsel. Of he can. You know, now it's uh, now yeah. it's very different. You know, yeah. it's an ongoing investigation. Well, I don't, I it's an that. ongoing yeah. investigation into charges that no longer exist because the statute is run for infinity. Right. Thank you, Andy. Nice to, see, to you. see you, Andy McCarthy. What a shame! Letting the statute of limitations run out, allegedly intentionally. Slow walking the crap out of it. So, oh, well, no, the statute of limitations, it ran out on that thing. We can't do that anymore. That, that's run out. And allegedly, I heard that it was being done intentionally. Well, I can't say allegedly I heard. I heard that allegedly, that, that, that's the way to say it. Goodness gracious. I'm talking like Joe Biden over here. <laughs> I heard that allegedly it was intentionally being slow walked so that the statute of limitations would completely run out. On, on a lot of these things. So he would walk away totally free or with a little slap on the wrist because one little thing he he was able to get charged for. Uh, and th this, this stuff is shameful. And I hope that this brings more light 
to the situation so more Americans can actually see what's going on because, you know, Democrats always point the finger at Republicans for being corrupt and uh, uh, um, Donald Trump for being the worst thing to happen to America. And if he ever becomes president again, it's going to be a threat to democracy and yada, 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 the rule of law, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, they're doing all of this stuff. Meanwhile, they're allegedly, allegedly, allegedly intentionally slow walking this process so that Hunter can walk away free. Allegedly, of course, allegedly. All right. You know, but they point the finger at Republicans at the same time and say that they're the bad guys and they're the threat to democracy. They're the threat to rule of law, to, to the rule of law. Meanwhile, in Democrat cities, it's the lawless wild, wild west. But who am I? I'm just a I'm just a small YouTuber who makes videos from time to time, you know. I don't know anything. I mean, I really don't. I'm a, I'm an infant when it comes to this politics stuff. I'm still I'm still new. My breath still smell like Similac out here. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Seriously though, but if 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 I can see it and call it out, then I know all of you see it and I I hope that enough people in America can wake up and realize what's actually happening. And it's not the Republican side of the aisle that is a threat to democracy, even though we don't live in a democracy. Y'all know that. I don't need to restate that. Um, it's, it's, it's the Democrats. It's the Democrats in actuality. And it always has been. So, yeah. Parties never switched. Sorry. I know they like to push that narrative. Party switched. Party switched. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. You might have, you might have, um, hmm, put it on ice for a while, but as Jin Saki would say, y'all circled back. So it's no surprise that Democrats are doing some of the stuff that they're doing and saying some of the stuff that they say. It's no surprise, you know, from what we just talked about all the way to when, you know, leftist Democrats try to yell at black people for not voting for Democrats and telling, trying to white liberals white leftists try to tell black people that they aren't black if they don't vote for a democrat what 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 kind of bs is that does that sound like a party switch to you i don't think so anyway thank you for tuning in as always y'all let me know what you thought about this one in the comment section below peace and love i'm out